Business Saturdays. Welcome to Small Business Saturdays video series with your host and my husband. And my dad, Anna Montgomery. Join the conversation. Let's talk some business. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, happy Saturday, everybody. Happy Small Business Saturdays. My name is Aaron Montgomery, and uh, glad you're joining us here this morning. I've got uh, some exciting conversation about ready to happen here. Uh, a new friend of mine, uh, Renee Krauss from, uh, we've got to know each other through the success principles and, and uh, working on becoming trainers in that realm. And so, uh, we had an opportunity to kind of chat, and uh, I wanted to share her story. She's got some cool stuff. Uh, I think it's going to be really useful. I think it's going to be really valuable. Um, you know, a lot of times here we'll talk certain specific, like marketing things. We'll talk specific this, but you guys also know that you know I like to look at the bigger picture and talk about our why and talk about kind of how we bring things together. How as small business owners we can better ourselves, better our business. Um, you know, because it's it's not about working to uh, working to live, it's, or, or sorry, living to work. It's about working to live. It's about, you know, so your why shouldn't be just, I have a why for my business and I have a why for my personal life. And I have a, you know, I do all these different things and they're compartmentalized, uh, as small business owners, you have the right to work every hour of every day. And, and a lot of times you have to do that to make, make ends meet and make things work. So, Let's make sure that our work, our life is all part of, again, the greater good. And, uh, you know, we we had a great conversation before we even started. Um, and and we're going to bring a lot of that stuff to the table here and and uh, bring that up. But uh, if you're checking in this morning, love to hear from you. Love to have your comments and feedback and uh, tell us all about, uh, you know, your part of being part of the greater good and, and, and doing those things. So um, real quick, if you want to catch me or, or uh, hook up with me there. My email's up in the top left corner there, Aaron at MontcoConsulting.com. And uh, one other thing to share, uh, this is starting to fill up guys. So if you want to be part of the Becoming a Digital Marketing Superhero webinar, uh, there are limited seats available for that. So if you just go over to my website there at uh, AaronMontgomery.info slash marketing, you can uh, get registered for that. If uh, you use the coupon code community, That'll get you $25 off, half off the, the price of admission there. So um, it's only $24.99 to uh, be part of this uh, three-hour webinar. And, and there'll be lots of other uh, help. And you know my, my whole deal is just helping people out. So we're going to talk about websites. We're going to talk about email marketing. We're going to talk about social media and just some great strategies for small businesses and, and people in general. You know, what's your personal social media strategy and stuff like that. So um, excellent. And uh, my, my wife is uh, checking in from my page this morning. So good morning, sweetie. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, let's get to Renee because there's a lot of great stuff to talk about here. And and I want to be able to share her whole story. So let me grab Renee here, uh, doing a couple things in the background. Good morning, Renee. How are you? Good morning. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here this morning and and uh, talking about being a part of the greater good. Um, so let's let's start off here, Renee. I, just tell us a little bit about your story, kind of your journey, and and what led you to the success principles. To give us give us a little background on you. Oh well, <laughs> my journey has been a little bit. Um, okay, so most people go. Uh, some people. Ha go on the super highway and go from point A to point B. <laughs> yes. I do not do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I wish I could, yeah. but I just didn't do that. Um, and I started out wanting to be a behaviorist uh, many years ago in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> yes. And um, I got injured pretty badly and couldn't do that anymore. Okay because I worked with high behaviors with specialty seizure disorders. Ah. And um, the doc said, hey, if you do that again, we can't put you back together. So yeah. don't do that anymore. I'm like, yeah. okay. <laughs> so what's next? <laughs> so what's next? So I ended up in the restaurant business for about 25 years. Okay. And which was super fabulous. But then as a single mom, that didn't work out so great. <laughs> yeah, restaurant hours were not <laughs> no, that conducive was not, to that. <laughs> that was not working for me and my child anymore. <laughs> and um, in that time, I tried to become like what do re restaurant managers do? They become 
sanitarians, which most people know as health inspectors. Okay. So I took the class, da, da, da. And that was just about when the economy was crashing. So there were a lot of jobs, but there was no money. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. So I had the certificate and I did my internship hours and da 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 and there was no job. Ah. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yeah, all that. So so yes, yeah, so again, the journey is not quite uh, no, <laughs> this, no, like, <laughs> right. Yep. So yep. I didn't and I applied. We I live in Connecticut, so I applied to Pratt, I applied to travelers also who have no jobs because there's no money. <laughs> <laughs> yep, jobs need money. <laughs> yep, they need the money to pay the people. <laughs> so I ended up opening a cleaning business, <clears throat> which um, I love and it works great. And in a roundabout way, and that depends on your perspective as to how you see it. I see it as divine intervention. Other people see it as, you make connections through people and they just lead you to the right people. So however you want to think about it. Sure. I met a wonderful lady named Kim Angeli who owns Grateful Box, um, which resonates with me because you should be grateful for the things that you have. And even when you things are not going great, uh -huh. the more you are thankful and keep a positive attitude, the world will give it back to you. Yep. yep. Um, and so she has been my coach and she led me to going to a Jack Canfield event. And then at Jack Canfield, the little voice in your head that if you don't listen to your world goes crazy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, I listened because after all the like, banging on my head stuff over the years. I'm like, okay, I'm listening. I gotcha. I'm doing it. I don't know how we're going to afford this, but okay. <laughs> yep. And so through the journey of the TTO, which I'm still on, of course, I met you and yep. a lot of other fit, like awesome, awesome, positive people. It came to me that my, I'm not that I don't love the cleaning business and I love my customers and I don't want anybody to think that I don't cause nope. I do. Yep. That, that, that shows we can, we can uh, feel but, that right away. <laughs> I want to give back a little bit more and there's all kinds of scientific data that shows that Seven, between seventh grade and ninth grade is where we lose the girls and their dreams get crushed either by peer pressure or they get introduced to things that nobody wants their girls to do or, um, and I'm not saying I wasn't one of those girls. <laughs> we all have to figure things out in life. <laughs> so, so. Um, but those go to your life experiences so yep. that you can maybe relate to them or you Correct. can, um, just, it just all, everything always adds to your life experience and your toolbox anyways. Yeah. Totally. And so, um, seventh to ninth grade girls is where they lose their hopes and dreams and the real people's other pe other people's reality starts telling them what they can and cannot be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, my new project is working on. Well, we're getting it, trying to get it off the ground, of course, but yeah. it'll be um, working with that age group and using the success principles to give them tools. So when the world says your mom didn't even graduate high school. How do you think you are going to be a rocket scientist? Yeah. Well, this is how this is, you can do it. What do we need to do? Like, where's your goal and let's roadmap it backward. And what do we need to do and create like a, a very safe environment for them to 
talk about it with each other, kind of like our our mastermind class with Patty Aubrey. Yep. It, that's a very safe environment. Like sure. if people thought, Renee, that is the craziest idea I have ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> Nobody would put me down. They would just ask qualifying questions as to have is there a need have you found out if there's a need for it? Yeah. Um, how do you think that's going to help, you know, like positive things to help you get to where you want to be? Sure. Sure. I, and, and that's a great point, you know, is that if, are you giving the people in your life that, that encouragement that you need, that they need to, to kind of, you know, cause guess what? Some of the best things in our world came out of the craziest ideas. <laughs> and, and to be able to put people in those safe environments to be, you know, think about that from like a small business perspective. You know, if your employee comes to you and says, uh, you know, I, I think we should do it this way. And you go, well, that's crazy. Do you think they're going to come back to you with other ideas in the future? <laughs> you know, so well, I mean, you have to be supportive and say, do you, how do you think that will, of do you, I, that's a great idea. Do you have any idea on how we should implement that? Do you have any idea? Um, how do you think that that will change the culture? How do you think that that will change our processes? Yeah. Like in the cleaning business, one person does wet and one person does dry. Yeah. And that's how cleaners, in case anybody ever wants to know, that's <laughs> how we get in and out of your houses really quick. And in and out of your offices, like we save you six to eight hours and we're only there for two hours, which is actually four hours because it's two man hours. Mm -hmm. So, but if somebody said, Renee, let's change the process. Okay. So how is that going to work? Correct. Yeah. But you have to have that um, safe culture Yeah. in order yeah. for people to come up with the idea and feel comfortable because we've all worked in places, I'm sure, that they're like, no, this is the way we do it. You just sign on the dotted line, do it this way, shut your mouth, and move forward. Correct, correct. And yeah, those places typically have huge turnover. So, because yeah. it's just not <laughs> yeah, a safe that's space. That's not the way we want to do it. I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. So, uh, all right. Well, so we talked a little bit about obviously the success principles. That's how you and I connected to and, yeah. and, and this path that, you know, again, you and I talked before and, yeah, our, our journeys have kind of been more like this. <laughs> yeah. Some people are a little more fortunate. I, I'm going to guess most of the folks listening in, most of our our community here is a little bit more like this. <laughs> um, in fact, a friend of mine, Todd, uh, says good morning. Uh, I know Todd's journey has been uh, a little bit more like this. Uh, so, um, but this this idea, uh, this concept of kind of the, the greater good, and you know, this led you to want to do a little bit more and give back. Yeah. You've already talked a little bit about about the kids, but maybe give us a little bit more about that. What what, what is this project? You know, what do you see in your your vision of what this project's going to be? I, I think at one point you mentioned uh, something about foster kids in some of our previous confrontation. Yeah. So I'll I'll yeah. I'll let you explain it further. Okay, so um. When I first, um, when this first idea came to me and I don't want anybody thinking like I'm some genius cause I am absolutely not. My life is like a ball of yarn that unravels sometimes. It's not the super highway. Um, so anybody whose life is like a spool of yarn or a string after the cats play with it, don't worry. Like it does, it's all good. I think those people are the geniuses because they've had all the life experiences to learn, you know? <laughs> yeah, they really have. So, um, and they have more tools in their toolbox. Yeah, I love that. So when they come up against something that they haven't necessarily seen that before, yeah. but they've seen something similar or the, it goes ding, ding, ding. The light bulb goes in their head a little bit and they're like through the Rolodex. And yes, I'm that old that I say Rolodex. <laughs> that, right um, there. <laughs> <laughs> um, you like when you your life is like that, you can go, oh, wait a minute. I wonder if that would work in this situation as well. So the idea is to um, I know that was kind of roundabout, yeah. but I, I that's how my brain works. <laughs> so. 
if you okay so take foster children uh -huh. or um kids that have not had parents that were like you can be anything you want to be yeah let's try this let's try that sure you want to try soccer you want to try drum lessons you want to try painting whatever say they didn't have that they need to have a place because all they've known maybe is safety and security for whatever yeah. reason um and this is a safe secure place where it's more like a workshop maybe yeah. um it didn't start out that way but now that's because in the beginning it was like clear as mud to me um i just knew i needed to do this <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> right yep. it's gonna evolve and change and develop into what it's supposed to be yep and um but i see like workshops or um small coaching groups or something like that where they know that it's safe yeah and first you have to get people them to keep their dream alive yeah or make a dream because sometimes if they're in survival mode like they just want to know that there's a bed there is food yeah they're they're safe yeah they don't not even have a dream sure the dream is to be safe yeah yeah not i want to be a hairdresser yeah i want to be the first lady on neptune yeah like and it, it's not for me to say what their dream is like and that's not the important thing to me at all like it doesn't yeah. matter to me what you want to do yep the important thing is to get to that place and then help them have the tools to get there and know that as that dream changes, it's okay. Yeah. Because if you look in my eighth grade yearbook that my friend of 35 <laughs> had nicely posted on the fake book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> it said I wanted to be a material scientist. <laughs> Yep, I was going to okay, be a car salesman. <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay that it changes. Yeah. But as you're making that dream, they'll learn tools to make whatever dreams happen and overcome obstacles, taking 100% responsibility for their actions. Yep using the crayon exercise, using I am 100% responsible for my grades, for my actions, for my attitude, for, yeah, okay. Your life might have been a pile of poo. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to think yeah, of a nice that, way to put that. That is a nice way to put but, that. I'm very proud of you. Right, <laughs> And if I'm talking to these kids, I need to like make sure that I clean up my. <laughs> I better get some a better download on some better verbiage yeah, here. There we go. Um, Pile of poo is perfect. <laughs> I, and I get that. Okay. Yeah. That totally sucks. What are we gonna do about it? For the rest of your life, you cannot say. When I was ten, my life was a poo. Yep. You're 25 now. What are you going to do to change that? Correct. What are you going to do? And give them, to, I'm not asked, like, you don't say that right away. Because well, yeah, they yeah. don't have the tools to answer that. Yeah. So you're, it's giving them the tools. And if sometimes those poor foster kids, they don't, and I, I don't say poor as in a money. I yeah. say, okay, I have to change that verbiage too. Thank you guys, because I'm needing to fix my verbiage. Here. That's why I started this uh, whole thing. It's about <laughs> it's about fixing all of these things and, and, and a perfect testing and proving ground for what we're trying to do here. So I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wait a minute, I can't use that verbiage. <laughs> um, that maybe they don't have paper. Yeah. Maybe they were at mom's house last night and something horrible happened. 
and now they're at so and so's house and maybe they don't have the correct uniform to go to school because yeah. even the public schools in Connecticut are switching to uniforms. Maybe they don't have the paper yeah. to do their homework on. Sure. Like they do not have lined paper at so-and-so's house Yep. that they were not expecting to be at. Yeah. So all these things make contingency plans, make up, Okay, what? Let's back it way down. You are one hundred percent responsible for your math test. What do you need to do to make sure that you have the things? What do you need? Yeah, yeah. To do that. Yeah. And who do you need to ask? And how do you ask that? And in an appropriate way that will get you the results yeah. that you want. Acting out in class so you don't have to take the math test and you get sent to the principal's office is not going to get you the grade. Yeah. Find the school counselor. Yeah. Find a pair of professional that you know, like, and trust and say, hey, because every teacher in that school looked at the newspaper that morning to see whose children are not going to be in that class. Yeah. And I know that because my mother was a elementary school teacher in a, a town for 35 years. And yeah. she would look at the paper to see which one of her kids got moved by the arrest record. Huh. Yep. And went to class. So it won't be a secret. Yeah. It's not a secret. It's supposed to be a secret, but it's not a secret. Yeah. But you're no longer at mom's house. You're now at Auntie Jojo's house. Yeah. So tell tell somebody that like but that's a skill like their their re, a normal reaction will be to act out so they don't have to take the test yeah yeah and fail sure so you're going to help give them the skills the tools to have have a better reaction to yeah you yeah. you know what if we go back to our e plus r equals o you're going right. to give them the r yeah, this is your the event. This is the response. This is the outcome. Yeah, the response is that you told the teacher to f off, yeah. and you flipped a chair, so you get sent to the principal's office, probably detention. And if that's your like fifth time in the last six months, yeah, you're probably kicked out. Yeah, that's not getting the outcome that you really want. That's just the outcome that you know how to do. Yeah, yeah, that's. Uh... That's incredible. I mean, we, we, we've talked on this program before about the E plus R equals O and, and all that stuff. And, but to break that down into, I mean, I, I haven't, I haven't done that in my head yet. So I appreciate you helping me, helping me through that <laughs> to, to break that yeah, down. It, yeah. That it's just, um, and whether it's, there'll be a multiple groups, I hope. Yep. And some of it is with, foster and um, other children that really need that help. And some of it will be with upper middle class, middle class sure. kids because mom's working, dad's working, they are rushing around and there's nothing wrong with this. And I don't want anybody to be offended getting brother to soccer cat back to sister to this, this to mm -hmm. this, and you're, you're 12 years old. You should be able to hang and da 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 da. Right. Yeah. And I, I know I was when I was 12, but that's where we lose them. And there are programs for 10th, 11th and 12th grade girls for leadership and all kinds of things like that. But we have to get them there. We cannot lose them in that seven to nine year, seventh grade to ninth grade um, area so that they can get to the leadership programs, so they can get to the, the internships or follows or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. I don't want people thinking it's only for lower middle class and 
and poverty. Yeah. yeah. That's not it at all. It's yeah. to, it's for almost everybody. Sure. We'll just have to figure it out and break it out different probably. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so knowing you, the, this, this program is going to be fantastic. I, I, I want to kind of relate this to everybody. I mean, the reason that I felt like this was something I would wanted to really talk about on, on this program, I know it's called small business Saturdays and you know, we want to talk about some, but, but I think this goes to a bigger picture thing because not only are you going to be able to help these people and, and have that ability to have significance and impact in somebody's life. And, and that's, that's enough right there. You know, that's, that's perfect. But I think if you even took that even a bigger step further, I mean, it could potentially help your cleaning business. It could potentially help yeah. some other, you know, so if, so for example, if I'm a screen printer in my community and my complaint is I can't find good employees to operate my equipment. Well, what have you done upstream? You know, what is the program? How are you helping these kids with these skills that they're not getting taught in school? You know, I mean, let's just be honest. No, they're not. The success principles are so far away from uh, what, what, the poor teachers have to do in school. Uh, you know, yeah. it's crazy. They're teaching to the test. Correct. And they have to. It's not. I don't want anybody to think that. Um, I, I don't know that. I'm well aware yep. that the teachers have to. They are mandated, mandated to. Yep. To teach to that test. Correct. It's not be a whole wonderful, loving, kind, generous person. Yep. Yep. So there are programs out there. Um, if somebody needs help, um, employees, we all need employees. Yep. If anybody knows anybody who lives in the Northeastern Connecticut area and can notice a cobweb and do something about it, <laughs> has, a, has a background check and has a viable transportation, <laughs> I'm hiring. It's just hiring. Okay, um, good. <laughs> I'm hiring. Um, but that's a little plug for my cleaning business. <laughs> yeah, um, so that um, there are programs out there. I just found one because of as my, when you listen to the voice in your head that says, do the TTTO, yeah. I know you, you can't afford it, <laughs> but do it anyways. Yep. And you do. Um, the world um, becomes a little bit better and you can, it, it, it gives you what you need. Correct. Yeah. Maybe not on your timeline. Yeah. <laughs> yes. but on timeline, their, their timeline is totally different. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm like, oh, snap, snap, snap. No, <laughs> nope. um, you still got to do the work. You still got to lean into it. You yeah. still got to plug, but it will give it to you. So there are programs. I don't know what they would be called in your area, um, but there are programs that are federally funded grants. Okay. So if in your area you have an organization that does um, education, okay. Um, yeah. like GED, yeah, yeah. Um, adult education classes. Uh, I'm sure that wherever y'all are, there yeah. are organizations like that. There is a grant that an organization like that here got, mm -hmm. and they're teaching um, 18 to 25 year olds how to fill out an application. Um, Yeah. Interview. Sure. Fill out a time card. Yeah. All, all the, the skills. Are, yep. All the skills and um, effective communication and customer service. Yeah. Yeah. And they get a little certificate um, at, at the end of it. And they need to have a part of this grant is the internship hours. So I had a lovely conversation with a lady, a super nice lady um, from EastCon um, the other day. And she got the grant and she's running this program. And so we'll take interns from this program. And after the internship hours, the hope is that the team members do well and you keep them. Yeah. Yeah. And in the, but in the very least, the company, get a trial period where 
if it doesn't work out, nobody can call Department of Revenue or yeah, anything yeah, like that. Yeah. You know, won't hit your unemployment taxes. Yep. And if it works out, you get a great team member. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and they'll, there's a pipeline. It's a federal grant, so there's paperwork involved. But um, the there's a pipeline that will just keep coming in. Yeah. For team members. Sure. And so if anybody needs that, but that goes back to the, I met Peter Persetto. I met <laughs> Kim Henry. I met, you know, like yeah. I went to Jack Canfield and then I started doing TTO. And then, so I, I truly believe that if I had not gone to Jack Canfield and become even more positive, yeah. And I hadn't started the TTO. I wouldn't have met you, Aaron. No. <laughs> yeah, right. I wouldn't have met you, and and uh, we wouldn't be able to share this great information with people. So yes, it right. all all means said, something. Yeah, and then because while you're doing your continuing education yeah. and your positivity stuff, and you surround yourself with positive people you meet more positive people Correct. yep. and that is brings positive changes to your business and your personal life. Totally. Totally. Yep. Okay. So Renee, I want to, I want to go back here a little bit and dive into some, so we've, we've already talked about, you know, hundred percent responsibility and, and some of those uh -huh. things, but let's go back to this, this program that you're working on here to talk to me about some of the other principles too, that, you know, you talked about creating a safe space and, and I think a lot of that's, you know, believe it's possible and some of that other stuff, but tell me some of yeah. the other, other principles that kind of really resonate with you that you hope to be able to bring to these kids or, you know, just to people in general, really, but obviously this is a great place to start. Well, that age group first, depending on which group it is, whether, yeah. so, um, if you decide that you want to be a hairdresser. Yeah. Which clearly that's not me. Oh. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you want to be a hairdresser, how do we want to get there? Like yeah. here's your big fat hairy goal, right? Yep. Yep. Here it is. And then let's work our way backwards. So it's a reverse. And then you're down here. Uh -huh. Okay. So what do you need to do? We need to go to school. Yeah. You need to have better communication because hairdressers have to have really good, positive communication with people. Yeah. You need to take art classes, whatever it is. Sure. Sure. Right. So you're road mapping in reverse. And then um, I am statements. Yep. The crayon exercise E plus R equals O. Um, and you can break those down. Each one that we learned as a chunk, you can break them down into like four or five segments. So one week, we can work on a piece. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then over the course of time, it'll make it so that they understand. Um, we could do, okay, so you want to be whatever. Yeah. Make dream boards. Yeah. Yeah. As, right. As, as a program. That's, that's fantastic. Yep. Yeah. And giving them the tools that they need to, to have those dream boards. Because they have to think about what should be on that dream board. Yeah. What, what, what should be there? Yeah. Should a big pair of scissors, what kind of a school do you want to go to? Do you want to go to, Paul Mitchell color special school? Do you want to go to the one right here in town? Do you want to go like where? 
Yeah. Yeah. So it, it makes their brains start thinking it's something tangible they can bring with them. So that is a really good start. Now, I know people say dream boards are nice, but without the action, they're useless. True. You have to act, but you have to be taught how to do that. Correct. And that's what I mean. Like you take this step and you break it down. And then you take this step and you break it down. And then you take that step and you break it down so that as you're going up, they are working on that dream board that they made. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you're not going to go to hairdressing school if you don't go to school. school. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. If you and don't pass eighth grade, you're not going to be a hairdresser. Yeah. And so it gives them gives them those stepping stones, those those things to look for, and the tool. You know, I think the real important part here is that you're giving them this piece up here, what they're looking forward for towards. Yes. But you're also giving them the tools that they need in the middle part. You know, like you were talking about the kid that maybe, uh, you know, acted out in class. You know, some people yeah. would just look at that and go, "Well, that kid just is badly behaved," but you know, if you really think about it, what's the cause of that? You know, like you said, maybe it's that right. they were scared and they didn't have the paper, you know? So <laughs> breaking those little, little tools that they need along the way to get to that. Uh, how do you, the, the hairy goal, what, how do you phrase that? I love how you phrase that. Oh, <laughs> I'm put, big, hairy, <laughs> big hairy audacious goal yeah i actually wrote that down in my notes from our call yesterday but um <laughs> mm -hmm. i love that um in fact i you know i'm in the t-shirt industry i'm gonna make you a t-shirt with that on it so that'll be awesome <laughs> it's a yeah. b-hag big <laughs> hairy audacious goal it's a b-hag b-hag we're making b-hag shirts all right good yeah cool. cause i think like that's so important if you live in a world that you can't dream then you're going to believe that that you that okay it's great to have a dream and your dream can change sure but you need to have the tools in your toolbox to get you there yeah yeah and that's why I keep saying, I don't care if they want to be a hairdresser, a rocket scientist. I, it doesn't matter to me. Sure. Because if somebody wants to be a rocket scientist, they're going to, and you work on that 100% responsibility and you break everything down yeah. and give them those tools, they're going to actually try and get into chemistry class. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because they can see it now and they have that, right. that ability to, you know, go, yes, guess what? I'm empowered because I have 100% responsibility of myself and- um, And I have 100% responsibility of 50% of the relationship. Yep, yep. Which is not something that sometimes in that age group that that part gets lost or they've never, you know? Yeah. No, they don't know that. Yep. So those are all, um, super important things that they need to learn and use in the future. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Okay, cool. This is so inspiring. So wonderful. I, I love the fact that we've been able to kind of talk through some of the stuff. Plus, like I said, I, I think there's so many tie-ins. I hope people are able to tie all this, this stuff in um, for themselves. W what, uh, I guess my last question for you, Renee, is, is what, I don't know, when this goal came to you, when, when you had that voice in your head saying, hey, you need to do this, how'd, mm -hmm. that, make, how, how'd that make you feel? Oh, that, <laughs> that was like the, that was the passion. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't come up with the cleaning business either. Just so you know. Yeah, yeah. That like that 
I'm not that smart. <laughs> what well, you are, but that, that's okay. I don't want anybody thinking, hey, she thinks she's stupid. No, but when you have tried in a in a downturn in economy or recession or what I don't I don't remember what they decided to call that <laughs> time from but whatever it doesn't matter there yeah. was no jobs okay correct. correct so you can call they can call it whatever fancy term that makes them feel better but straight up there was no job I had to stay in the restaurant industry that's where my like because I was a, I'm a trainer there I'm a this I'm a that da 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 it didn't translate into a whole bunch of other things. And the bruise on my head was so big. I just went to bed and was like, I don't know what to do yep. anymore. Yeah. And cleaning business showed up. If I had not listened to that, I might still be in the restaurant business, totally exhausted and miserable and not seeing my daughter. Yeah. So I did it. And so when this came to me, I'm like, okay, I got to do it. Yep. I don't know what it looks like. I don't. So when you get an idea, as long as it's a positive idea, yep. and as long as you, it resonates with you and fills you with passion and makes you happy, yep. you should do it. I'm not saying like, <laughs> Look, we all need to make money because yep. we all have a mortgage and we have children and you've got a car and whatever you have. Yep. Yep. But if you can do something that fills you with happiness and joy along the way. Yeah. And maybe it becomes the thing that yeah. you do. Yep. That I think a lot of what Jack Canfield talks about, that's it. Yeah, no, agreed. 100%. That's totally it. And whether you use it in your business to make it a happier, a better culture, yep. make it so that you're having fun. So your team members have more fun because the office feels it Yep. or the manufacturing plant feels it or how, wherever you are. Yep. Um, your customers or whatever. Yep. That's really what I think he talks about. And mm -hmm. that's why the principles are great no matter what you do. Totally. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm right there with you. I think this, just that, that, like you said, all these little things lead in, in, you know, the, you don't understand where the pieces are going to go, but they are all pieces right. that equal that end and piece for you. And, you know, I, for example, I'll give an example myself here. Uh, people that watch this know that I work with a company called Pick the Gift as, as one of my consulting clients. And, um, you know, they are in a similar situation to you, Renee, where where they need employees. They're a manufacturing company. So it's a, you know, it's an entry level job. It's not the most, you know, yeah. it's in a hot warehouse. It's, it, you know, I don't think people. Not wake, but it, it works. Correct. But it's a job and, and, and they need employees and they need good employees that, that are going to be there and care and show up and all the things that you said, like with your cleaning business and they struggle with that for a long time. And, and they, they made that change to be thinking about how can we better other people? How can we grow the people that we have? How, how can we support them? And now we're getting people that are applying to work there because they heard somebody at the bus stop say how great things were and how we were helping them in their lives too. You know, um, the, wow, I'm teaching some awesome. success principles and stuff like that. So all of that stuff kind of comes together. And, um, you know, you mentioned, you know, you got to make money. Uh, our friend Mariah from our group posted something that I saw the other day that I, that I loved. It said, money is just a tool for me to help others, you know? Yes. <laughs> so if you can, if you can put all that together, I, I think it, it, it makes for greater success personally, business wise, whatever you're, you're after. So um, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing this message, Renee. <laughs> no, so thank you so much for having me. This is a fantastic Good. So, all right. Before I let you go, any anything else? Anything that we missed? Anything else you want to share with anybody before we get out of here for today and get back to our Saturdays? Um. Well, um, I don't know if you if anybody has any thoughts 
um, or ideas mm -hmm. on how we could make this work. Okay. Or your cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs lady. You can catch me on Facebook um, okay. under Renee Kraus. I live in Connecticut. Okay. Um, so you can find me. I also own Renee's Cleaning Service in Connecticut. So you can find me that way. Perfect. I also on Facebook. Okay. And Aaron, I wish you the best, best of luck. And I hope that we stay connected because uh, you are fabulously awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate this. Um, and yeah, if anybody, uh, they can find you there, they can connect with me and I'll put you together. Like I said, if, if you're up in the Northeast area there, um, you know, donate some paper. You know, I mean, that was something that you said that like people just don't have lined paper. And I, you know, if, me being yeah. me, sometimes that just goes over, right over my head. So, you know, let's connect. Let's let's make this happen. Let's uh, be part of the greater good. Thank you so much. And if there's anything I can ever do to help anybody else, reach out, tag me, send a smoke signal. I'll help you out. <laughs> yep. You're awesome. Thank you so much, Renee. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Wow. Uh, man, I don't know about you guys, but uh, uh, just inspired is, is the word. I... <laughs> We were talking about uh, when she was telling the story about the kid that maybe was acting up in school and kind of figuring that out. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed or not. I was trying to be uh, be strong and brave, but uh, I actually uh, got a little tear in the eye, you know, just thinking. Yeah, and, and and that was just an example kind of story, you know, and it just but that in that inspiration. And I think as small business owners, that's what we need. We, we need to have that inspiration. We need to. Heck, uh, I don't know, if Todd, if you're still hanging out here, but Todd had posted a video of like this thing that happened in his retail shop. And, you know, he could have easily just gone, you know, this is ridiculous. This is stupid. I'm going to pack it up. But you know what? He believes that he can do more for people, be part of the greater good, help people out, help small businesses, do all that other stuff. And then like Renee was talking about, we can then tie that back into either our business, our personal life. You know, it's it's all one big happy thing. And the more positive people we're around, the more connections we make to positive people like Renee, uh, like Marie, who um, jumped in here and I didn't get a chance to post her comment while while Renee was was on, but uh, says, awesomeness, you look amazing, Renee. Great job. I wholeheartedly agree. That uh, was fantastic. Um, so cool. So Todd says, <laughs> oh, that was so much fun. Yeah. Uh, crying, uh, crying kids and, and some other stuff that just is like, again, somebody needs to help that person with the tools that they need to uh, become a little bit better human being. But all right, you guys, uh, amazing, awesome. Uh, what other words can we use to describe that? I hope everybody's inspired. I hope you guys are, are going to go out there. Um, I hope you connect with Renee. You know, if you can support whatever she's working on and, and hopefully Renee will continue to, uh, post that stuff, get, get the information out there. Keep continue telling us, you know, hopefully uh, I can talk her into coming back on as this progresses and uh, seeing, seeing what this program becomes and, and what we can do so, to support it. So appreciate everybody's uh, time here today. Again, my email is, and I'm never, uh, Hey, I'm going to figure this out. There you go. Right there. My email is right there. So if you want to connect with me, you want to connect with Renee, you can do so through me, through her, uh, Facebook and all that kind of fun stuff. I'll get some things posted. You guys are awesome. Have a great rest of your Saturday and we will talk to you next week.